What's going on everybody? Kwaku here bringing you a brief video today as you see in the title is a new build of Windows 10 on the dev channel. It is build 21354 as you see in the bottom right corner. Um, and with it, the highlight feature is some updates to the news and interest panel, which normally would be on your taskbar about right here. So some of you might actually have that if you are on the dev channel. It's being rolled out to uh, insiders slowly. So it's getting re-rolled out to people. I used to have it, don't have it anymore. But what I can show you is what came from that thing. So one, just before we even get into it, um, they have actually changed the naming of this release to CO release. It says just like they did in October where they release builds from the FE branch, they can change branch uh, of builds that they flight from. So they work in development cycles internally and so they just change the build when they need to or change the branch that they need to. Um, I wish I could know what CO stands for and I hope I can reach out to someone to find that out. but. That's what it is now. It changed from what FE to CO. So now going down or RS to CO. So now going down, we see here what's new in build 21354. 21, so one of the new features here it says new personalization options on the news and interest taskbar. So down here you would see news and interest. Normally, that's when I in the old videos I had a temperature. So showing right there when I clicked it I, or hovered over it, I could see a bunch of a panel open up and it had a bunch of stuff. And this is what it would show similar to this. So it says here, um, because you're continuing feedback, uh, they have a new features rolling out to personalizing the feed to suit your interest. Now, when you hover over the weather on your taskbar, you'll see manage interests appear at the top. Those buttons link to a full page personalization experience card so you see when you click that you'll see see more news but then you can also hit manage interest and it boots it into this screen here now you might be wondering where does this screen even come from so what what happens by default is when you're on your home page here of your edge browser in fact I'm gonna hit the X you see this personalized you can click it and this is your interest right there um, I don't see this page here um, but it seems to be that that shows up. It says tune your feed. So if I click that and tune my feed, see, I don't have that option down here because I don't have a feed. I don't have news and interest. So soon this interface will pop up and then that's what's going to show up uh, on news and interest. Um, they said also um, tune your feed to left pane right there. Yep. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, and they're showing you basically in this whole paragraph how to do it. Click the X to remove the article and so on. You can remove select articles and just tweak your interests, I guess, your news stories and interests to exactly what you want, whatever you don't want to see, whatever you do want to see. And they're just explaining how to do that. Now, it says improvements to display settings. Now, what they call uh, SABC sab or essentially content adaptive brightness control. It says this helps improve the battery performance on PCs, but with the trade off, it decreased image quality. So, basically, what you can do is you can go into your display settings. In fact, if I do that now, you'll see display. And then, if I want to, in fact, you know what? I'm going to go here. It's faster. If I go to display settings here, let this thing load in. And then I look at, I don't know, personalization. And then I just type in display. And then just wait for the search to show up. Now that it's loaded, you'll see this page here. And of course, I am not using a laptop. I am using a desktop, so I don't have a battery inside it. So I won't get those options. But for those of you with laptops and stuff, you'll see this change brightness for built-in display change the brightness automatically when lighting changes um, because the ambient sensors in most laptop displays they can dim it on command and you know brighten it on command depending just like your cell phone and then here we have down here to bring awareness to the high quality HDR displays and educate customers we are bringing HDR certifications under system display advanced settings uh, with the latest insider preview builds under the settings page displays HDR certification will be shown. So let's see if we can see that there. Uh, it says advanced display settings. And then you see it says color space SDR certification none for my current display. So I don't have our HDR uh, certification apparently on this uh, Samsung monitor, even though my monitor does in fact support HDR. Because if we go back and then we scroll up here and we see HDR, we click it. You can see HDR settings pops up. 
and you can see use HDR is yes, stream HDR no. I'm not going to turn on HDR for the purpose of the video because the last video, one of the last videos I did uh, made everything look weird and overly exposed. So I'm not going to do that there. But my monitor does have HDR. Um, it's just for some reason uh, it says I guess it doesn't have an HDR um, certification for it. So that's fine. So going deeper, it says here, new camera settings page. We're also excited to introduce a new camera settings page that they've been working on. And so with this new camera settings page, they'll give the ability to, for users to add and remove and configure the image settings of each camera. So you can use those IP cameras, which is your net local network cameras. If you don't have a camera directly connected to your computer, but it's on a network or your webcam directly you'll be able to tweak the settings the brightness and all that stuff for your camera i won't do that for this test just because uh my camera is not even plugged in currently um, and then they're looking for feedback as usual on what it is some other things microsoft says they called them inbox apps now i explained it in a previous video inbox apps are essentially apps that are built into windows they are pre-installed when windows gets installed and what two of those inbox apps is Microsoft Paint, which we all know about for a very long time, and the snipping tool, which just to summarize the snipping tools updates, um, they both of these applications are now going to be updated outside in the Microsoft Store, outside of major OS updates. So you can get more updates for the snipping tool, more updates to Microsoft Paint. But the snipping tool has been combined with Snip and Sketch. So those will be updated together. And they say that um, one will be removed. The snipping tool will be uh, removed after updating because it'll be merged with Snip and Sketch. And then here is like one of the final major highlights that they're showing in this build. Um, and in the last build, 21343, they changed the Windows Administrative Tools folder um, and start to Windows Tools. And they're continuing with that there. Windows accessories, Windows PowerShell, and all those things have been removed from the start. And the apps within these folders can be accessed in the Windows tool entry point. So if you just type in Windows tools, you'll get access to your PowerShell administrative tools and all that stuff. Or if you're just if you just know about computers, you can just right click and then you can see PowerShells right there and you can just click it. Um, but for everyone else, that's what it is. Most people will never touch these tools. I personally have almost never touched these tools other than PowerShell. Um, but that's pretty nice to have. Now, going down more, we have some news and interest updates, like they said, changes and improvements. Um, they enable the ability to deselect on hover the news and interest taskbar options, which is thank you so much. Because for one, it got kind of annoying where I accidentally hover over here and then news and interest pops up. Sometimes it can lag a computer that's like has way less RAM than mine. Um, so they added the ability to deselect open on hover and then news and interest panel. That's really solid. And then also for Linux, they said uh, the default path for Linux files on the subsystem for Linux um, has been changed. And so that's what it's been changed. So I'm not going to read it directly out because you can see it there. Um, and then it says under settings and update and security and active hours, you'll find the toggle turned on for automatically adjust active hours for this device based on activity. So therefore, if you've never updated your active hours, which I've tweaked it and active hours is still pretty terrible. Um, it still interrupts you even during your active hours. Um, it says they're starting to roll out for users that makes this setting on by default. So it kind of figures out what hours you're active on your computer and it can schedule updates outside of that. And then one last change here. They said that on ARM 64 devices such as Surface Pro X, it says you can now toggle the compatibility settings for X64 applications, which is pretty nice, pretty dope. And yeah, I'm not going through all of the changes because again, as I say in all the other videos, we'd be here for a while. Now, going into the fixes, this is just the highlight fix that I'm going to just just read real quick. It says, we fixed an issue where certain games may crash, will not sync data when a game is played on a different device, or will not save when a new game is installed. So for those of you who play games on your computer like me, that's been fixed. Thank you very much, Microsoft. I'm glad they fixed even the Ubisoft bug a long time ago. So that's good to go. Uh, one other issue here that I really wanted to mention was this right here, the search reliability issue. We fix an issue impacting search reliability on a previous flight, on the previous flight. Now you might saw, you might have saw on one of the last videos I did, I tried to use the Windows search tool in the on my start menu right here. 
and it just wouldn't work it, every time i started typing it would just close immediately um they fixed that issue so it's more reliable and two when i used to type in like obs or something like that it wouldn't even bring it up it'd bring up everything else but obs i had to go to the apps folder in order to get into obs it was very strange but that's in fixed there's a whole bunch more fixes there's a whole huge list of fixes here and known issues there um but yeah only time will tell when more of these things get fixed i'm not going to go through this whole list because there's a ton of things here um but yeah and yeah hopefully guys you guys enjoyed this video if you see any issues obviously you got the feedback hub um you can post a comment here i won't be able to really do anything about it other than put your comment in the feedback hub and they can take a look at it because being an mvp some things are highlighted um that i post so maybe i can get your things uh posted and and more seen so they can get fixed quicker hopefully um yeah let me know what you guys think in the comment section below and take care Thank you.